Shalom. Uh, good morning sa lahat at uh, mag-umpisa na tayo sa our uh, what they call this yung pinakaunang biyahe ba yun? Pinakaunang Hindi, kung baga sa barko yung first trip ito eh. Maiden. The, the maiden class. Uh, because uh, we have been building this uh, structure for seven months. And this is the first time na ginamit natin yung classroom na to. So with that, we are so grateful. Ayan, nandito kayo. And, and this is an introductory lesson. Uh, Bible school level na po ito. Kasi we have enhanced so much things in our high school. Uh, for those who do not know high school, yan po yung high school ay... Isang programa po yan na uh, ng course na uh, dinisign sa United States na ang pakay nito is to teach the Hebraic roots of the foundation of Christianity. So, siguro mga more than 30 na, 30 high school classes na ang kinandak namin ever since. I've uh, been doing this for 10 years. But, uh, with experience, I na enhance na natin yung high school. Ibig sabihin na napapaganda pa natin lalo ngayon. So kung ano yung existing na high school, gagawin natin very comprehensive. So comprehensive lesson itong uh, ang kwa natin, ang mangyari. Uh, like I promise, Bible school material. Uh, galing po ito sa Hebrew Roots Teaching Institute sa South Africa at uh, accredited po sa Harvard University po ang eskwelahan nila. Hindi po basta-basta. Ang uh, kaibigan natin si Joseph Tumon, doon po siya nagmasteral kay Professor Leibenberg sa Hebrew Roots Teaching Institute. So we've been working on our partnership para maitatag yung curriculum dito. So, with that, let's pray. Abba, Father, we thank you that uh, we have this great opportunity to, to deal with the subject of the law and grace. And this subject has been confusing in the minds of many Christians for over the centuries. And we want to clarify the muddy waters, Panginoon. And you're the God of, you're not the God of confusion. You're the God of clarity. You're the God of light. And we, your children, shall walk in that light. That light. So we ask that light, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to guide us now in our maiden class in this Torah Institute of the Philippines Foundation, Incorporated. And we want to bless the Hebrew roots of our faith, the knowledge of it, to our kababayan, mga Pilipino in the Philippines, Lahat ng mga kababayan natin sa buong mundo ay yun po ang aming mission and vision to reach out to the remnants of God's people. And we believe we are in the end times so we are running out of time so we need to do our job to reach, to teach to all the nations, to as many as possible. So with that, we thank you Abba to Yeshua. All the glory belongs to you in Yeshua's name. Everybody say Amen. amen. Okay. So our class today is Hayesod. Ha means da in Hebrew. Yesod means foundation. So Hayesod is a Hebrew word for the foundation. More particularly, the foundation of the faith in what we call Christianity. Ano ba ang foundation ng Christianity? Is it Hebraic or Greek? So we're going to answer that question. Uh, this lesson... Uh, it's going to be more particularly concentrating on the subject of law and grace. So at the very onset, i-discuss na natin agad yung concept ng law and grace. So with that, uh, we'll proceed with the first slide. Okay. Masabi nga, Research is the process of elimination so that what remains is the truth alone. So, napakagandang kasabihan. Ang pagre-research daw ay 
Habang nag I've been, ako, I've been researching for 15 years and I felt that I I know very little. Uh, the more you know, the, the more you study, the more you realize how little you know. So there's never ending uh, study pagdating sa Word of God. Uh, there, will be, there will never be a boring moment sa karya ng Diyos. So our uh, motto is we inform, we, we, we teach the truth, you choose. So this has been the motto of our parent uh, Bible school, Hebrew Ridge Teaching School. They just inform us, you choose. Uh, hindi natin ipipilit, pero medyo ipipilit din natin konti. <laughs> pero what we do is information. Bibigay namin ang tamang information. Okay, first, God has called us to do two things. We are never to give up studying and seeking the correct interpretation of any given Bible passage. Second, such opportunities are golden moments for us to learn, to show grace and love to others whose understanding of a given passage may differ from us. So that means uh, an opportunity to share the truth. And Hebraic mindset, mga kapatid, study is the highest kind of worship. So Hebrew culture is study. So it is through study that we are to know the, the will of God. So I study to show thyself unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly interpreting the word of truth. Yeah. Pagsikapan mo mag-aral at maging karapat-dapat sa Diyos, manggagawang walang dapat ikakahiya at tapat na nagtuturo ng katotohanan. So... Ang sabi rito ni Apostol Shaul, Hebrew na yung po, sabi niya kay Timothy na dinidisciple niya, From childhood, we have known the sacred writings or the scriptures. By the way, we are using the Tree of Life version scriptures, which is a messianic version. You can download it sa Eastward for free. Uh, or kay, just give me your uh, USB, I'll give it to you for free. So sabi rito, from childhood, you have known the sacred script writings and scriptures that are able to make you wise, leading to salvation through faith, trusting in the Messiah, Yeshua. All scripture is inspired by God, useful for teaching, for reproof, for restoration, and for training in righteousness. Question. Since the time na sinulat ni Pablo itong sulat kay Timoteo, wala pa po ang New Testament. Okay. So, ang sacred writings na tinukoy dito at all scripture is what you call in Hebrew the Tanakh. Okay? In case you're not familiar with the Tanakh, ito po yung Tanakh. Ito po yung tinatawag na Tanakh. Okay, tingnan natin kung makita sa ating screen. Yan, Tanakh. Can you say Tanakh? Tanakh. Tanakh. Tanakh, we'll find out later what is what Tanakh is. Some of you knows already, but uh, we'll explain. Ito yung Tanakh, ito yung pinatawag na Brit Kadasha, the New Covenant Scriptures. So, explain natin yan mamaya. Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Since you rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you forgot the Torah of your God, so just I will forget your children. Alam mo, in Hebraic way of writing, ang Hebrew, pag nagsulat, may parallelism. May parallelism. So, alimbawa, dito, knowledge, tapos, sa sunod, your Sabi niya, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Then you forgot the Torah. So dito, yung knowledge is tantamount to knowing the Torah. 
So basically, if you interpret the scriptures, pag nakalimutan ng tao ang Torah, nawawalan sila ng knowledge tungkol sa Diyos at sa kalooban ng Diyos, sila ay napapahama. At tuwing na binabasa ko po itong talata mga kapatid, naalala ko yung ating bayan, di ba? Mahal natin ang ating bansa, di ba? Ang Pilipinas. Ang aking bayan ay nawawasak dahil sa kakulangan ng kaalaman sapagkat itinakwil mo ang kaalaman. Ang nilimot ang kautusan ni mo ni yung Diyos. Nakita niyo po? Pag nilimot ang kautusan, ay kakulangan ng kaalaman. So, eh, kaya nga po tayo, is very passionate tayo to share the, the, the Torah. Kasi nandun po yung pundasyon ng kaalaman. Doon sa Torah, nandun po yung tinatawag na pundasyon ng kaalaman. So, okay, perhaps mga kapatid, hindi na po bago yan na may narinig na po kayong this is, a, this is a common thinking in Christianity. In fact, for the last 1,700 years, ay nananaig yung tinatawag ng Greek mindset in knowing the scriptures or what you call the the modern way in understanding the scriptures na wala na daw kautusan or kung hindi man wala na, hindi na mahalaga or the law has been done away with so the law which is in Hebrew Torah most Christians in general do not use the Torah as the foundation upon which to build their faith. That's true, mga kapatid. If you go to 100 churches, 900 or 990 out of 1,000 church, ito po yung standing point or doctrinal stand ng churches. Hindi na mahalaga ang Torah sa pundasyon ng pananampalataya kristyano. On the other hand, the messianic believers or, you know, what the Torah keepers, the Hebrew roots movement, many many ways to call it, believe that the Torah is the foundation for understanding the rest of the Tanakh, the Bible, and the New Covenant Scriptures. So Christians hardly ever build the foundation of their faith on the Torah, which is the only true scriptural source for a foundation. So, ibig sabihin, our stand, we believe the opposite. We believe the Torah is the foundation of the scriptures. And we're going to prove that many, many times over. Although the new covenant scriptures, the New Testament, are god bred or inspired by God, but they were never intended to be used to form the foundation of our belief system. So that means, if your faith is not based upon the foundation of the Torah, then you need to seriously consider studying the Torah diligently for yourself to see what Yahweh's Torah says. If your foundation is built predominantly upon the scriptures from the New Covenant, the New Testament alone, then you will have less than ideal understanding of Yahweh's scriptures and His will for your life. This less than ideal understanding will exist because you will lack the proper foundational understanding to interpret the rest of the Tanakh and the New Covenant scriptures. So bottom line, ito yung bottom line. Can you say bottom line? Bottom yeah. line. It will be impossible to fully comprehend the new covenant scriptures, the New Testament, without a proper foundation from the Torah. Yan ang bottom line, mga kapatid. No wonder, Yeshua, this Jesus' Hebrew name, 
I have, I have come, said, I have not come to destroy the Torah. The law literally means to correctly teach the Torah. I have come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. So, wala tayong whiteboard marker. Okay. Ha? Huh? Wag na, wag na, wag na, wala na tayo. Okay, ang salitang, I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. I come to know that this word fulfill in Hebrew means uh, levatel, which means to abolish, to make of none effect. Sabi ni Yeshua, I have not come to abolish the Torah, make it none effect. In fact, sinabi niya, do not even think. Wag nyo man lang isipin na Ako'y naparito na sisirain ko ang kautusan. Ako'y naparito upang hindi sirain. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. Eh, alam po, when Yeshua was saying this, He was not teaching in English. He was not teaching in Tagalog. He was teaching in Hebrew. So the Hebrew scholars in Israel understand what He's saying. The Hebrew word for fulfill is lekayem. So you can write it down, lekayem. So what does lekayem mean? Lekayem means to explain and interpret the Torah correctly. Yung po ang ibig sabihin. So, anong purpose? Bakit dumating si Yeshua? Sinabi niya sa mga apostoles, Ako'y naparito upang ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo ang Torah sa tamang paraan. Bakit? Marami pong nag interpret ng Torah sa hindi tamang paraan. Mga pariseyo, mga sadyuseyo. Kaya napansin nyo, panay nire-rebuke niya ang mga sadyuseyo at mga pariseyo. So therefore, everything in the New Testament scriptures is clearly founded in Torah. Uh, one of my teachers in the early days of my journey, my brother, is Rabbi Ariel Berkowitz. I hope he's still alive today because he's already 60 when I first met him in 2006. Sabi niya, sabi ni Rabbi Berkowitz sa akin, he's a Messianic uh, Bible School uh, professor in Israel Bible College. Sabi niya, Nag-seminar siya sa UP, Diliman, 2006, January. Doon ako nabuksan sa Torah. Sabi niya, if there's one verse that becomes the center point of the entire New Testament is Matthew 5.73. Hindi si Paul. Hindi dapat si Paul ang center of attraction sa New Testament. Si Yeshua. Paul is not greater than Yeshua, definitely. So with that in mind, let's start our journey. First, mga kapatid, sabi dito ng author, before you proceed, sabi niya, you have to uh, first read the booklet, You Are Israel. One of the reasons why You know, Papa Shet Naja Brass and the good. Okay, okay. So, Upisa natin sa pinaka commonly understood verse in all Christianity, in all Christian circle, and this is uh, found in Ephesians chapter uh, 2. Okay. Can you read the passage? Can you read the passage? Kasi very common naman sa atin lahat, you know. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. It is not based on deeds so that no one may boast. For we are His workmanship created and the Messiah Yeshua 
or good deeds which God prepared beforehand so that we might walk in them. So sabi rito, sabi ni Rabbi Paul, by the way, you notice something na God chose a rabbi to give us the New Testament. Is it that amazing? Di ba kayo nag-isip doon? Ha? Ang kausap natin sa New Testament, rabbi. Pero ngayon, ang kausap natin, mga pastor. <laughs> Anong pagkakaiba ng rabbi sa pastor? Bigyan kayo isang pagkakaiba. Papapansin mo sa Bible, pag umupo na si Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua, di ba? Pag umupo na siya, nagtuturo na siya. So, yun po ang difference. Ang pastor, pag tumayo na, sa pulpito, mga ngaral na. Sisigaw na, pag-agalitan niya na yung libro. The point is, mga kapatid, more on teaching talaga ang style ng mga rabbi. Long teaching. In fact, discipleship is Long-term teaching. Long-term. Hindi lang po. Ako, I wish, yung na-accumulate ko knowledge sa Bible for the last 16 years. How I wish, bigyan nyo lang ako USB, kakarga ko na sa utak nyo, or hindi na tayo mag-meeting. Doon na, nangaral ka na sa inyo. Pero hindi ganun eh. Dadaan ka sa proseso. Pero, at least dito, hindi na tayo dadaan papasip, paligoy-ligoy pa, no, diretsyo na tayo sa mga katotohanan dapat natin malaman. Sabi rito, definitely, ang salvation is by grace. Uh, it is the gift of God, not based on your works. Na sabi rito, God, pre God even prepared beforehand. Nakita na ng Diyos sa umpisa pa man na ang plano niyang kaligtasan through Yeshua HaMashiach ay magaganap sa buhay ng mga tao sa mananampalataya so that we might walk in them. Okay. In Hebrew, ang salitang walk is performance. Hindi siya mental faith lang, kundi may gawa. So, pananampalatayang may gawa. So, maliwanag, hindi pwedeng walang gawa. What I want to emphasize brothers and sisters, is the next verses after saying salvation is by grace through faith in the Messiah, inexplain ni Paul ang relasyon ng, by the way, uh, there's a whole, we're going to deal with, I believe this, high so, tuloy-tuloy na po to hanggang next year na to. Every Saturday. Kasi, sobrang daming pag-aaralan Kasi nga, yung Bible school sa abroad, binigay na sa akin yung ibang mga materials. Napakadami. The book of Galatians, the whole chapters. Ephesians, Romans, so verse by verse. Lahat yan, nakalamin natin. Sabi rito, at the time you are separate from Christ or Messiah, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, Having no hope without God. Sabi rito. So, ang kausap ni Paul, Ephesians, mga Ephesians, so always mga kapatid, suggested ng mga scholars, ang mga churches sa Ephesus, Corinto, Thessalonica, Romans, sabi ng mga scholars, palaging mixture yan ng mga Lost tribe of Israel Tsaka mga Gentiles Anong percentage? 50-50? 60-40? Or 80-20? Sabi ng mga scholars 80% Gentiles Ang mga churches in the first century 20% mga Israelites Mga lost tribes of Israel Kasi yun ang utos sa mga disipulo Mangaral kayo sa mga lost tribes Ito'y base sa mga pangalan na nakasulat. Like in the book of Romans, when you read names of people, 20% are Jewish names, 80% mga Greek names. So, in explaining Apostle Paul sa Ephesians, sabi rito sa Tagalog, 
Sa panahong yon, kayo ay walang Messiah or Christ. Alam mo, we might as well use mga original terms kasi pag nasanay tayo sa mga westernized terms, lalong hindi malinaw. Okay? Messiah means Christ. Okay? In Hebrew, as Mashiach. So I will use terms, original terms like Torah, Messiah, Yeshua. Sabi rito, sa panahong yun, kayong walang Messiah, bakit? May Messiah ba sa Greek? May, may Messiah, may concept ba ng Messiah sa Greek? Wala. Alexander the Great was not a Messiah, he was a conqueror. Herod was, King Herod was not a Messiah. Wala pong Messiah sa Greek. The only concept of Messiah na tagapagligtas or anointed priestly king Walang iba, matatagpuan lamang ito sa Hebraic, sa Hebrew Scriptures. <coughs> Hiwalay kayo sa pagiging mamamayan ng Israel. You were separated from the common commonwealth. Sabi rito, commonwealth of Israel. Sino dito nakakadaan sa commonwealth avenue? <laughs> ano ba ibig sabihin ng commonwealth? The wealth in common Hindi po ang ibig sabihin ng commonwealth Ito po ay Halimbawa po uh, This is a kingdom term Which means uh, Halimbawa uh, Bahamas, the Bahamas. Si Dr. Miles Monroe explained these terms Commonwealth Sabi niya, Halimbawa yung Bahamas Is a commonwealth of the United Kingdom Ibig sabihin, kung ano ang patakaran sa United Kingdom, siya rin yung patakaran sa extension ng kanilang kaharihan. Halimbawa, uh, kung ano po ang batas sa United Kingdom, may extend nila sa Bahamas because na-colonize nila yung Bahamas. Kaya sabi ni Don Tormiles Monroe, kahit mainit sa Bahamas, naga-Amerika na sila. Kasi nga, yun ang kultura ng mga Inglaterra. So sabi ni Paul, Paul is using kingdom terms. Sabi niya, you, ang tinatukoy niya rito, Gentiles in the flesh. Ibig sabihin, born Gentiles. No? You were born Gentiles. You were called uncircumcision by those called circumcision. Okay, again. Circumci the circumcision is what you call the parasitical Jew. Mga mga ano to, mga those who believe, mga Jewish people to, who believe salvation is by becoming a Jew. Ibig sabihin, Salvation is by becoming a child of Abraham by birth. By virtue of birth. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw ay anak ng Israel, automatic, ligtas ka na. Ganun ang paniwala ng mga Hudyo noon. Kaya nga, ang palatandaan nila ay circumcision. Pero sabi ni Paul, ina-address niya po ang mga taga-Epeso, pero kayo, mga hindi naman kayo tuli, or mga Gentile kayo na pinanganak, hindi kayo lahi ng Israel, you were separated from the Messiah. Kasi walang Messiah sa Greek. Eh. You were excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. Ibig hindi ka kaskabilang sa, sa kaharian ng Israel. You were strangers to the covenants of promise, which is, take note mga kabatid, the word covenants is in letter S. Bakit? Marami pong covenant na naganap bago, bago New Testament. And that is going to be our lesson number three. Our lesson number three, baka ito ay ten lessons from now pa. Kasi we're going to deal more with the issue of law and grace, law and grace, law and grace. Okay. Dati kasi, yung high program, mabilis lang. 
Lesson number one, Torah, the Tanakh. Lesson number two, Salvation by Grace. Lesson number three, Covenant. Ang bilis lang. Kaya pero hindi ano hindi nasisingin talaga ng mabuti. Ito ngayon iba, enhanced high school na po ito. So sabi rito, a Gentile born is without the covenants. Wala siyang pangako na pinangako sa mga Israel. Okay? To give you an idea. Abrahamic covenant, Mosaic covenant, Davidic covenant. Those are the major covenants. Ibig sabihin, kung Gentile ka, wala kang kinalaman dito, outside ka, wala kang, wala kang beneficyo. Sabi ni Paul. Kaya sabi niya, you have having no hope. Sabi niya, walang pag-asa. Walang Diyos. See? So, by the way, mga kapatid, you take note of this, ha? Kasi, tatlong klase po ang Gentile. Sulat niyo po, lalabas po sa exam ito. Kala niyo, wala nang exam ito. May exam ito. Tatlong klase yung Gentile. Yung Gentile na pagano, walang Diyos, yun talaga yung barbaric, mga barbaric. No? Pangalawang klaseng Gentile is yung tinatawag na God-fearer. Hindi siya Israel, pero matakotin sa Diyos. One example is Cornelius. Si Cornelius ay God-fearer na tinatawag sa Acts chapter 15. Diba? May takot sa Diyos. Kahit hindi siya uh, Israelite, pero malakas ang pananampalataya niya sa Diyos ng Israel. In fact, siya yung centurio na tinutukoy sa Luke chapter 7. Siya yung sinasabing walang taong kasing laki ng pananampalataya ng taong ito. Just say the word, my servant will be healed. You don't have to go and pray over. Sabi niya, dakila ang taong. Wala pa akong nakitang tao sa Israel, sabi ni Yeshua. Katulad mo. Sino yun? Centurion na yun. Yun po ay si Cornelius. Binanggit siya ulit sa Acts chapter. So pwede ka pala, Gentile ka, pero malakas ang faith mo mga kapatid. Pwede mo, higitan mo pa ang Israel. So God is fair. So, continue, sabi rito, Kailangan talaga idahan-dahan ito eh. You, mga dayuhan kayo sa tipan ng pangako. Walang pag-asa, walang Diyos. Ibig sabihin, wala-wala na. Mapapahamak na. Pero, sabi ni Bo, but, kaya nga pero no, pero but now in Messiah Yeshua, you who once were afar off, have been brought near by the blood of the Messiah. So ngayon, ito na yung tinatawag na bottom line ni Paul. Because of the Messiah of Israel, you, sabi niya, you, mga Gentile, mga barbarians, mga walang Diyos, pinalapit na kayo sa pamagitan ng dugo ng Messiah, for He is our shalom, our feast, the one who made the two into one and broke down the middle wall of partition. What Paul is actually saying, disunited ang Gentile and Israel, wala silang unity. So sabi ni Paul sa kanyang discourse dito, paano magkaisa ang Israel at ang mga Gentile? Kasi sabi niya, merong uh, hostility. Sabi niya, Mede, merong middle wall of partition or middle wall of separation. May pader daw. May pader na naghihiwalay sa Israel at sa mga hintil. Okay. Ano kaya yung pader na yun? Yung pader na yun mga kapatid ay yung mga dogma ng mga rabay. Yung mga katuruan na mali. Ano yung mga yun? Sabi ni Paul, the dogma of the ordinances contained in the law. Hindi written law, mga kapatid. Hindi written law ang dogma. By the way, dogma means 
man-made teachings. So sabi ni Paul, what separate the Jew and the Gentile in the first century are those dogmas, man-made teachings. I give you an example mga kapatid. Pag hindi ka circumcised, wala kang kaligtasan. Dogma yun. Pag when we go to the book of Galatians, maraming dogma doon. Or the other term for this, isulat nyo po, works of the law. In Hebrew, maase hatura. The extra added interpretation of the law. Natagitan nyo po. Pag hindi biblical ang teaching, it creates division. That's a principle. Kaya nga mga kapatid, we stick to the written word. Do not add nor subtract. Because God's word is already perfect. So, so then, verse 22, you are no longer, I'll read on, You are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are a fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Kanina, sinasabi ni Paul, kausap niya mga Gentile, wala kayong kabahagi sa Commonwealth ng Israel. Dito sa verse 22, inelaborate niya pa, You're no longer, hindi na kayo foreigner, hindi na kayo ibang tao, ibang lahi. Dahil kay Messiah Yeshua, anong sabi? Pakibasa nga dito sa you are, pakibasa, you are a fellow, you are a fellow, citizen, sino yung God's people na tinudukoy? Israel. It was not the Greek church or the Gentile church. God's people, so nakita nyo mga kapatid, hindi po pwede magmalaki ang Gentile. Siya po ay sinama lang sa covenant ng Israel. Pero tila baga nga ngayon, mas mayabang na ang Gentile. Walang pakialam na sa Israel. Ganun po ang ikatong ganito po ang spirito ngayon. Anti-Semitic. Kaya sabi nung isang pastor, yung kausap si Brother Renato, sabi niya, Brad, mga Messianic, panay pinag-uusapan pinag ng Jewishness. Jewishness. Hindi yung Jesusness. Ibig sabihin, naiinis niyo siya kasi daw, bakit ina-elaborate niyo masyado yung Jewishness ni Christ? Or hindi naman si Jesusness, mga kapatid. Mali yata ang intindi niya. Jesus is a Jew. That definitely, pag-aralan natin ang Jewishness ni Christ because in the first place, he's a Jew from the tribe of Judah. Culture language, setting, cultural background, his upbringing. And we will deal more of, by the way, mga kapatid, Itong library dito, open to for research. Dito sa taas, yung unang ano dyan, yan yung The Hebrew Roots of Christianity, yung libro sa taas. Yung pangalawa is the Torah. Yung ilalim is prophecy. So all the rest, a backup na lang yan. So katulad itong libro na to, the Torah, Law of Grace. So, hindi po tayo nagtuturo na walang basehan, mga kapatid, pinag-aralan kung po talaga ito ng matagal. At confirm na confirm ito habang tumatagal, confirm na confirm itong mga teachings, mga kapatid, na katotohanan po ito. Sabi rito ay Hindi na kayo mga dayuhan at banyaga, kundi kayo'y mga kapwa ng mamayanan ng mga banal at kaanib na ng sambayanan ng Diyos. So we have to understand, mga kapatid, if you understand the Bible correctly, God is interested in discipleship 
or in discipling a nation, not just a group of people, not just an individual or sect denomination. If you notice carefully, ang team ng Bible, mula kay Abraham, ang pinangako ng Diyos ay mga bansa. Hindi po mga individual lamang, kundi mga bansa. I, I think uh, next Shabbat, uh, next Saturday, I think I, I have to request Brother Alvin to do an introduction kahit mga isang oras about the kingdom. So, prepare Brother Alvin. Kasi, kingdom teaching is a very foundational sa Hebrew roots of our faith. Unless we understand kingdom, we will not understand the message of the Bible. So, Brother Alvin, I trust him. He has done a lot of uh, research also on this subject. So, next Shabbat, we expect mga one hour of kingdom teaching, no? kingdom principles. So, dito sa, if we are to apply that principle, kingdom principles, so, kingdom ng Israel, citizens, may mga beneficyo sila. Kasi may covenant sila sa Diyos. Isinama ang mga Gentile doon sa beneficyo. Okay? Kaanim na kayo. So, maliwana. Verse 20. Build upon, sabi nito, on the foundations made up by the apostles, emissaries, and the prophets with Messiah Yeshua himself being the corner stone. Okay. Sa Tagalog, na itinayo sa saligang inalagay ng mga apostol at ng mga propeta si Kristo Jesus ang batong panulo. Alam mo yung salit ng cornerstone? Ano yung ibig ng cornerstone? Hindi yung stone sa corner. Ganun lang kasimple. Ha? Hindi po sa in Hebrew it's Rosh Pina. Okay. Rosh Pina is a term doon nilalagay yung poste ng bahay. Yung poste. Doon nilalagay sa batong pundasyon na yun. Ibig sabihin Si Kristo daw ang pundasyon ng haliging tinatayo na ito pero ito ay itinayo ng pundasyon mula sa mga propeta. Nakita nyo po? Ano yung pundasyon? Mga propeta, mga tinuro ng propeta at mga tinuro ng 12 disciples. So, so para maintindihan natin kung ano yung tinayo, dapat maunawa natin ano yung sinasabi ng mga propeta. Anong sinasabi ng mga apostoles? Verse 21 is a spiritual uh, term. Sabi niya, in him, the Messiah, the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple for the Lord. In him, you are built together in God's dwelling place in the rock. So parang sinasabi rito, tayo'y mga we are the spiritual body of Christ. So, again, mga kapatid, bago nyo i-spiritual ang mga bagay, meron hong literal yan. Kasi karamihan ng Christian ngayon, shortcut ang pag-interpret sa Bible eh. Ini-spiritual na lang. Kaya sa, noong 2010, kagagaling ko sa Israel, kausap ko yung isang pastor. Sabi ng pastor, Brad, Wala na yung Israel noon. Tayo na ang New Israel. Sabi ko, Brad, kagagaling ko lang sa Israel, hindi naman mga espiritu ang tao doon. Literal talagang mga Israelite. Anong sinasabi mong spiritual Israel ka? Meron talagang literal. Yung nasa bansang Israel ngayon, isang example yan. So, so, nakita nyo po, dito pa, eh, this is foundational, mga kapatid. Israel and the Gentile believers are one. Yeshua is, bro, sabi rito, oh, mga alitang humahate. Ibig sabihin, the cause of this unity. Inalis na. Pero, mukhang napakaraming disunity ngayon. Mga kapatid, 
Alam nyo ba, Christian, most Christian ministers, pastors, bishop, in the Philippines, ako, I go around, la, la, 2019, apat na beses yata ako nag-mission all around the country. Wala pong unity. Ang Baptist, hindi yan mag-unite sa Pentecostal. Pentecostal, hindi yan mag-unite sa Evangelical. Pero pareho yung niniwala kay Jesus Christ yan. So nakita nyo na, bakit? Ano ang cause ng disunity? Dogma. Man-made teachings. So, so yun. Kumbaga mga kapatid, alamin natin kung ano yung biblical teachings, ano yung dogma. Kasi kung dogma lang yan, kaya nga dogma eh, magiging dog ka. Doon <laughs> De, de, sabi sa isang isang teacher sabi niya no balik na rin mo yung dogma sabi niya am god you're making yourself a god And that's a better translation no kasi yung kanina joke yun yung ito insert mo si si brother ang ah, nakahanap ng ano yung uh, ligaw na aso yan Pinangalan niya Hebrew, Baruch. Hindi ko mapalayas ngayon kasi nasabi yung anti-Semitic ako. Hebrew yung pangalan. <laughs> Papalayasin ko na sana yung aso kasi ano siya eh. K9. Alam niya yung K9? Kinain ng galis. Puro ng galis. Kasama yan sa joke yan mga kapatid. Kasi ano, minsan, pagkatapos ng klase, ang naalala nyo yung jokes eh. Mm. Hindi yung lesson. <laughs> K9. K9. Yung K9 eh. Magamit nga ng joke na yan. Okay, therefore mga kapatid, so maliwanag na, the time is arrived for Christian to smell the roses, accept Yeshua's truth, or Yahweh's truth, and obey Him. Yeshua did not come to start a new religion. He came to be the savior of an existing nation, the nation of Israel. So there can be no doubt, no question in debates about this truth. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, before we're going to gentilize the message of the Bible, we need to understand its original context. Alam mo, may kasabihan sa movement na to, what you call the Hebrew streams. God's revelation or the word of God was revealed originally to the Hebrew people. There's no debate about that. Walang makakadebate dyan mga kapatid. All the writers, 40 writers of the Bible, were all Israelites, Hebrew. Isa lang daw ang medyo alanganin Isra Israelite. Sino yun? Sino yung alanganin Israelite na nagsulat sa one of the Bugaspet? Ha? Bakit si Luke? Kasi... So si Luke ay medyo Israelite lang. So medyo. Medyo lang. Bitna lang. Pero the rest were all Hebraic. They were all Hebrew people, mga kapatid. So there's no doubt we need to understand the scriptures from the point of view ng mga writers who wrote it. You know why? Most people assume, when they read the Bible, they assume something, pero hindi naman pala yun yun. Kaya nga, assume eh. Sabi nga, it makes you, it makes an ass of you and me. Sabi nila, if you assume, I think that's not a good joke. <laughs> so, pero sa mga Amerikano, okay lang yan. So, now, we're going to deal na. Okay, before we're going, before we're going to deal with the argument for keeping the Torah, as Yahweh's 
uncompromising guidelines for holy living? I would like to open to the floor for questions so far. Uh, we have dealt very little subject, pala, but I think that's a good foundational introduction. So I'd like to reiterate the gospel was preached to Israel first. Gentiles are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. The message of the Bible was Hebraic, not Gentilized. And number two, it's Gentiles joining Israel, not the other way around. It's not Israel joining the Gentiles. It's the disciple teaching the Gentiles. It's not Gentiles teaching the disciples. Now, for most people, mga kapatid, most of the teachers of the Bible are Gentiles. So they Gentilize the message. We are different. We teach the Bible from its Hebraic foundation. And we believe this is the way to go. This is the way to clarify all this confusion in the Bible. So any question, mga kapatid? It's either you understand or you did not understand. Or you understand the jokes. The three types of Gentile. One is a pagan, barbaric. Walang Dios. Medyo, yun, mga barbarians. Number two, God-fearers. Um, may real... Naniniwala sa Diyos ng Israel, may takot sa Diyos. Number three pala, sorry, I did not mention the number three. Converted Gentiles. Ibig sabihin, proselytes. Converts to Judaism. Talagang dumaan sa proseso ng conversion. So number one, when we study the book of Galatians later, converted Gentiles are under the authority of the rabbi. Okay. And the number one requirement for being a converted proselyte to the religion of Judaism is circumcision. Circumcision. And the rabbis call this the Noahide law. Pero there's no such thing in the Bible as Noahide law. They, those are dogmas of the rabbi. Kaya, when you read the book of Galatians, Paul is against the commandments, di ba? Against the commandment, if the commandment is misused against the Paul. See? Magpagkakaiba yun. Hindi siya sumasang-ayon sa Torah, sa commandments, kung mali naman ang paggamit nito. So the opposite is true. Pag tama naman ang paggamit, hindi siya against. See? So kasi po, pupunta na tayo sa pangalawang aspekto ng ating uh, lesson na yun is question Question, okay. Uh, di ba may tatlong Gentile na binabanggit? Ngayon, kung Gentile na pinag-tutukoy natin, how do we qualify si Cornelius? God-fearers. God-fearers. Hindi siya convert. Ah, uh, okay. Let's go there. Uh, good question. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 10 ba yun? Acts 10. Oh, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a captain of the Italian regiment. Kapitan ng Italian. Ano ba yung Italian? Ita po yung tatay niya. Tatay niya. Ilocana. <laughs> Dedicated and fearing Elohim. Okay? Tingnan natin sa Tagalog paano pinaliwanag to. Isang tao masipag sa kabanalan at may takot sa Diyos. Nakitin na po? May takot sa Diyos. So si... So, si Cornelius po ay hindi proselyte, kundi God-fearer siya. God-fearer. Okay. Oh, uh, question pa before we proceed? Question? Okay. We're now 
alam mo, ito, heavy lesson na to, but pinalo ko lang yung high zone. Okay. Uh, Okay. Okay, to understand to answer that question, how did Cornelius come to know about God of Israel? Well, he lives in Israel. He was an Italian. He was part of the Roman conquerors. Kumbaga, he was part of the Roman, the enemies of Israel. He was part of the enemies. And yet, he fears God of Israel. So, sabi dito, <clears throat> okay, the, the cultural background of Acts chapter 10 is this took place around 20 years after the death of Christ. So, itong Acts chapter 10, 20 years nang after Christ resurrected. Na nangangaral. Ibig sabihin, for the first 15 years, nangangaral ang gospel exclusive to the lost tribe of Israel. Yun po ang utos ng Panginoon. Matthew chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. Do not go to the Gentiles. Go to the house of... Go to the priority. Ang, uh, we will... Pag nagturo si Alvin about the kingdom... Uh, I-insert ko yung topic na yan. Ano ba ang, what is the gospel in a nutshell for you to understand? The gospel of the kingdom, what is it really? Diba? Uh, maybe next Shabbat, we're going to explain that. So, dito sa uh, Acts chapter 10, basahin natin. Cornelius, a righteous God-fearing man, isang taong matuwid, may takot sa Diyos, may mabuting patotoo sa buong bansa ng mga Hudyo. Kilala pala ito si Cornelius. Highly respected among the Jew. So pumunta si Peter sa bahay niya. Peter, nagsimulang magsalita si Pedro. Peter opened his mouth. Sabi niya, to, I truly understand God is not one to show favoritism. Tunay ngang naunawaan ko na walang kinikilingan ng Diyos. But in every nation, the one who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to Him. Kundi sa bawat bansa, ang sino mang may takot sa kanya at gumagawa ng magtuwid at kalugod-lugod sa kanya. Nalalaman ninyo ang salita na kanyang ipinadala sa mga anak ng Israel. Okay. So there you are, mga kapatid. Sa panahon ni Pedro, 20 years, sabi ng mga scholars, after the resurrection of Christ, the Messiah, inopen na ang ebanghelyo sa mga hintil. Sino yung unang nabahagihan ng mensahe? Si Cornelius. Bakit? Dati na siyang naglilingkod sa Diyos ng Israel. Tingnan mo? God, he loves the Jew. God loves him more. Do you love the Jew? Do you really love Do you really love the Jew? <laughs> Alam niyo yata yung Okay, so question pa. That's a valid question si so, Renato. Di ba sir, alam po, um, sa Christian, sa di ba, pag yung dogma, kaya doon pinag-uusapan. Di ba sir, kahit din sa sweet spot, is yung nahanap ko yung reliable talaga. Kasi maraming mga, ano sir, di ba, commentaries, mga iba't ibang interpretation of the, the law. Oo. Oh. So, ano yung question doon? Yung question to them, Nasaan po yung reliable na answer? Kasi kahit dito sa Pilipinas, maraming mga abogado, pero sabi mo nga, sir, kapag vicious yung, ano, vicious yung law, hindi nila tinatanggap. Kasi maraming interpretation. Yeah. Uh, we're going to deal a lot of time with, uh, ito. I prepared a lesson on that. 
the 613 commandments how much applies to you we will going to deal with all the 613 commandments in the next 6 weeks isa-isahin natin yun para ma-clarify na yan and sabi rito, this is a book by the way the 613 commandments explain and this is going to be our lesson uh, also uh, itong ano what is the difference between what what which of the 613 commandments apply to me sabi rito, which laws must I do and which laws I can ignore. We need to, kasi para mawala na itong law in general, well, law, law, dami kasi yan eh. Alam mo, ang Christian is very quick to answer. Ah, you're no longer under law, wala na yan, alam mo. Pag ganun ang sagot, walang alam yun sa law. Kaya ganun siya sumagot. Hindi niya alam kung ano sinasabi niya. Para mawala, hindi ka na magtanong, wala na kasi yan. Kay Jesus na lang tayo. Pero the truth is, ah, uh, Ano yun? Okay, shalom. Sumingit pa eh. Meron pa dito, ah, ito, maganda ding topic to, ito, itong kwantin din pinaprepare ko. Ah, ito, libro din to, Reading Moses, Seeing Jesus, How the Torah Fulfilled its Goal in Yeshua. So, this is the Messianic perspective of the Torah. We're going to study this in the next few weeks. Para malalabas na talaga po ang katotohanan ng issue talk towards the law. So now, I think we can proceed now with our next subtopic which is an introduction of to the law and grace. So, the question that many Christians are asking the question is, can one follow the Torah fully today? Are we under the Torah, the law today or grace? Must Christians adhere to the full law? Of course, the answer to the statement like this is, of course, there is no temple, no sacrifice, no high priest, no Levites, and so forth. So there are scriptures that indicate that if one does not obey the whole law, leaving out nothing, then he is guilty of breaking the entire law. This is the argument used by many Christians to prove that we cannot keep the law. And you, you will hear this most often times sa mga pastors who studies in the Bible school. You Nobody can obey the law because if you break one law, you're guilty of all. So do not attempt. I think we, we, to clarify mga kapatid, tama ba yung ganong mga arguments? Uh, hold on lang, hold on lang. Lahat ng question nyo, masasagot na yan as we go on. So Christians would normally quote the following verses. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So this caused many Christians to say, we have nothing to do with the law anymore and therefore not under the law. Yes, you have heard this argument before. It makes perfect sense based on two verses. But they are unfortunately taken out, taken out of context. The real question that we should be asking is, what part of the law do Rabbi Paul as Shaul discuss? Pag may nagtanong sabi, may nagsabi po sa inyo, di ba we're no longer under the law? Di ba we cannot keep the law? The right question to ask is, what part? What part of the law that we are not under of? Kasi, if you're not under the law, then you have put yourself above the law. In fact, even sa ating bansa, may sinakasabihan tayo, ignorance of the law excuses no one. No one is above the law. Not even the president. And Christians, 
are saying this idea na there's no more law, mga kapatid, there is a confusion. And God is not a God of confusion. He's the God of clarity and order. So therefore, we must first understand how the old covenant was put together in order to understand the concept of Torah, better known as the teachings, instructions, and guidance from Yahweh. And what Rabbi Shaul and Apostle James Jacob discuss. The Old Covenant is known as the Tanakh. The Tanakh in Hebrew is the is foundational. Bago natin i-explain yung mga misunderstanding, ito yung talagang Bible. Kaya nga original to Hebrew to. Yan. Para na. Wala kang makitang ganito sa sa mga Christian bookstores. Wala ito. Directly to from Israel. In 2010, I brought 200 pieces of Hebrew Bible. Pinaship ko sa balik bayan boxes. Natira wala. Ilan na natira. Baka sabihin nyo, baka gusto ko magkaroon yan. Hindi po winibenta kasi gagamitin ko sa library. Okay. So, the Tanakh, can you say Tanakh? So, you, when you go to Israel, uh, pagkausap mong Hudyo, kung gusto mong respetuhin ka ng Hudyo, uh, uh, hey, Jew, uh, do you believe in the Tanakh? Yeah, Tanakh, yes. Pero sabihin mo sa Hudyo, hey, Jew, do you, do you believe in the Old Testament? What? Old Testament? Hindi ka niya maintindihan. Kasi that's the Christian way of talking. Lingwahe ng Christian, Old Testament. Testament is a Latin term. Malayo na po. The way to say it is Tanakh. So the Tanakh, the five books of Moses, is called the Torah. The, the, yung letter T dito, the Tanakh stands for Torah. The the letter N stands for the Nebeim. Nebi means prophet. Nebeim means prophets. Lura. Yung KH is called the Ketubim. Writings. So together, the Hebrew scriptures is called the Tanakh, the Torah, Nebeim, Ketubim. This is how you view the Bible. Okay. Iba po ang compilation niya kaysa sa modern Bible. So, there are three sections of the Torah. Sacrificial, moral, civil. So, basically, Torah. So, what is Torah? Torah is teachings, guidelines, instructions. Yun ang basically meaning ng Torah. So, hindi siya law. Part of the Torah is law, are laws, but not everything in the Torah are law. Okay? Kaya mga patid, Christians are confused. You're no longer under the law, wala nang law. Wala ka sa katinuan, Brad. Kasi yung Genesis chapter 1 is hindi siya commandments, kundi ang pinag-usapan doon, the creation narrative. So, we're no longer under the creation no wonder, most Christians cannot count the days of the week. Because they ignore the seven days of creation account in the Torah. Patunayan ko sa inyo how, how most Christians are, you know, not understanding the Bible properly. Example, question. In the Bible, what time, when does the day start? When does the day start in the Bible? What time? Because if you read the, the Genesis account, the evening in the morning, the first day. The evening in the morning, the second day. The day starts in the evening, not in the morning. Pero in the world, most Christians are influenced by the Greek world. 
time starts at 12 midnight. That's why in New Year's Eve, in January, uh, December 31, naghihintay tayo ng, ng uh, alas 12 kasi nga 12.01 mag ano na ng mga rebentador. Dahil New Year na in honor of pagan gods Janus, si Janus. Yung double face god. Oh, may nag-contest ba dyan ng mga born again Christian? Wala. Sumasang-ayon sila. Walang nag- Hindi nila alam eh. So, the day starts, hindi? Okay, question. I'll address this question to the women. What time did God created Adam? It's in Genesis. What time did God created Adam? Ha? Just before Eve. That, that's the answer. Right after Eve. No, that's the joke. Okay. In other words, the Tanakh is the entire Old Covenant Scripture. So the better term for is Old Covenant Scriptures, what the Hebrews call the Hebrew Bible. Okay. The many believers assume that our King James Bible is the most accurate and even the most inspired. Is that true? No. I don't know. When I was in uh, going to the marketplace some time ago, merong nangangaral na batang preacher sa palengke. Kinausap ko. Nakapamada, naka-low sleep. Formal na formal eh. Sabi ko, Brad, ano yung hawak mong Bible? Sabi niya, ito yung original Bible. King James. Wala nang iba. Sabi ko talaga, eh, very friendly siya. Gusto niya ako dalhin sa simbahan nila. Pero nag-aaral na ako ng Hebride noong mga 2007. Sinama ko siya sa bahay doon sa Israelbo. Pinakita ko sa kanya yung Torah scroll ito. Sabi ko, Brad, 2006, pumunta ako na Israel. Yan ang original Bible. Sabi niya, hindi, King James. <laughs> hindi, yan. E, pinahawak ko na, yan ang original Bible. Hindi nga, King James, Brad. King James lang talaga ang binabasa namin. Kung gusto mo, sunduin ka namin sa linggo dito. Punta tayo sa aming church. Sabi ko, sige, Punta ka muna dito pag Sabado. <laughs> Umatid din na umalik. <laughs> so, mga kapatid, although King James is good enough, pero nothing beats the original. So, if we have time, siguro, uh, maybe three Sabbaths from now, we can have a Hebrew language class. Uh, okay ba yan? Yes. Uh, principles of the Hebrew language. How does the Hebrew language work? We're going to deal, uh, explain at it. God's language. So the Bible was written, three parts of the Bible was written in the Hebrew language. Sabi rito, the, the, the Hebrew language is the language in the Garden of Eden. The meaning of each letter's numeric value, arrangement of words, make it uniquely a spiritual language. There is mystery and depth of understanding the hidden within the language of the Hebrew. In fact, they discovered today the secret Bible codes, the equal sequence uh, distancing, the ELS na tinatawag nila ay lumalabas yung mga prophecy. I do believe, mga kapatid, God's written original Bible, the Hebrew, contains a lot of truths, hidden truths. So, this is another level na po ito. Hindi na natin masyado explain to yung Bible code, no? kasi medyo controversial ito. Let's discuss na lang is Sephiroth 3.9 talks about a pure spiritual language 
So what? Since the Bible was written in Hebrew, so let's understand what is Hebraic mindset. What is Greek mindset? What is Hebraic mindset? Okay. Hebraic mindset is concrete. Sulat nyo to. Importante to mga kapatid. Greek mindset is abstract. Ang ibig sabihin, the Greek Bible, or the Hebrew way of writing, the way it was written, is full of concrete examples. Halimbawa, pag sinabing nagagalit ang Diyos, ang sinabi ron, umiinit ang ilong ng Diyos. God's kindle. Burning. Ibig sabihin, it's a picture of a nose burning. Pero, in acts, parang dragon, ano? in abstract term, ma-imaginan mo lang, galit ang Diyos. Ay, sumisigaw, galit. Di ba? Pero, the Bible paints it in a, a burning nose. Okay. Pag sinabi namang, Mahaba ang pasensya ng Diyos. The Hebrew Bible say, God is a long nose. I don't know what's the, what's, ano mo'y kinalaman ng long nose? Ha? Si Pinocchio. So what, I, what I'm trying to say, the way the Bible was written is, meron talaga siyang mga concrete examples. Never abstract. Eh, Hindi siya para siyang uh, you have to put the puzzles together para maintindihan mo. And number one basic difference between Hebrew thinking is is an action-oriented language. Sulat niyo po yan. Kasi this is how the Bible was written from the way the Hebrews write it. Hebrew is an action-oriented language. So the Tanakh wrote the Bible as God is an action-performing God. Hindi siya painted with abstract terms. Pag sinabi po pillars of fire, pillars of fire talaga. Pag sinabing clouds, clouds. Pag sinabing God delivers them in the, the Exodus in Egypt, makita mo God is palaging in action. Okay. The way the Bible was written, ito, grammar. Sa Hebrew, di ba sa English, uh, David is running. Sa English yan, di ba? Sa English, this is how, hindi mo pwede sabihin, run, David run, or run, <laughs> Samson run, Delilah on her way. <laughs> Sa Hebrew, you say, running, David. Nauna yung verb, sa noun. Kaya nga, when you read the Genesis, in the beginning, ano, ano, ang Genesis 1 naman? Sige nga. In the beginning, sa English, ano, in the beginning, God, okay, in Hebrew, that's not the way it was written. In Hebrew, it says, in the beginning, created God. Nauna yung action niya kaysa sa now, nauna yung action. So, nakita niyo po, God is concerned about action. Because you cannot fool God. You cannot fool God. Hindi natin pwedeng artehan ng Diyos. It's either we obey or we will not obey. So, much to that, isang problema kasi sa kasi pinagkakasya na rin hindi pinagkakasya na rin uh, yung English or grammar na nauna-una yung subject tapos uh, verb 
Sa Hebrew, lagi na yung verb. Eh. So, okay. Example. Give an example. Uh, ah, magamit na tayo na ano. Uy. Ito na lang, ito na lang. Sulat nyo to, lalabas to sa ano. The word faith in Greek, in English, is a noun. Tama? Faith. It, in Hebrew, imuna, or imuna na, sa Bibzaya. But, it means faith with action. Okay, sa Greek, to believe is, sa Greek, pisteo. It's a noun. It means to believe in your mind. You believe in your, in your head. Okay? Pero sa Hebrew, may pagkakaiba. You believe with your action. It's a verb. So we have a problem because faith in English is a noun while in Hebrew it's a verb. Confused na yung tao. That's why we cannot say, Brad, keep on painting, ha? Hindi mo masasabi, incorrect, Brad, keep on painting. Wrong, wrong English, di ba? But, alimbawa, Sa Hebrew, faith comes by hearing. Okay, you hear. Hear. Sa Greek, akon. To hear. Makinig. Pero sa Hebrew to, hear and obey. Doble. Ang emphasis is yung obey. Pag hindi ka nag-obey, hindi ka nag-inig. Parang inutusan mo yung anak mo, nak, bili ka ng kwan, uh, ano ba? Suka na lang, suka. Bili ka ng suka. Ang dala, pagbalik, patis. Hindi ka kasi nakinig eh. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka nakinig ng mabuti, kaya hindi, na, hindi ka naka-obey ng nararapat. Di ba pag sinabi mo sa anak mo, hindi ka kasi nakikinig. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi ka nakakasunod kasi hindi ka nakinig ng mabuti. Yung Hebraic mga Pilipino eh. Hindi lang nila alam, nga lang. Hindi pa nila alam. So may pagkakaiba po talaga sa understanding. That's why we need to lay down this Hebraic mindset. Halimbawa, ah, uh, Sa Hebrew, pag sinabi mo, Noah, walk with God. Enoch, Noah, Abraham, walk with God. Dapat alamin mo sa Hebrew yan, kasi the word walk in Hebrew is you walk in obedience with God. Mm-hmm. Okay. The word halak in Hebrew is sinunod mo siya. Kaya si Noah pleases God, si Eno pleases God, Abraham pleases God because they did not just walk, walk, walk in the light. Mm-hmm. Huh? They hear and obey. Hebrew sila. Kaya nga, sa Hebrew, worship is obedience. Amen. Nung sinabi kay Abraham, Abraham, you go to Mount Moriah, you offer your only son, worship me, sabi, worship me in Mount Moriah, come and worship me. Eh kung Christian si Abraham, nagkakanta yun ng ano? <laughs> I love you Lord. Di ba? May dalang gitara yun. Pero yung nasa isip ni Abraham, kailangan ni obey ko to. Uh, Isaac. 
Dala mo na yung panggato nga. <laughs> Di ba, kina- dinadala ni Isaac yung panggato? Ibig sabihin, talagang iaalay siya ng ni Abraham dahil mahal ni Abraham ang Diyos. Pero, the, the other side of the story, sinabi noon, in Hebrews chapter 11, Abraham believed that God will resurrect Isaac even if he kills him. Ganun ang tindi ng faith ni Abraham. Pero hindi ni paindulodan ng Panginoon. So, malaki po ang pagkakaiba ng Hebraic mindset. That's why we need to develop this Hebraic mindset. So, the best way to, to, to develop our Hebraic mindset is to study the Torah. Kasi the, the, studying the Torah and obeying the Torah commandments, nadidevelop yung ating uh, Hebraic mindset. So, developing the Hebraic mindset within you. Sabi ni, ano ba yung author na yan? Si, develop. So, alimbawa, Hebrew would emphasize on the beauty of holiness. The Greek would emphasize on physical beauty. Guess what the world is crazy about? Mm-hmm. Is the world crazy about the holiness of God? Or beauty ng mga beauty queens? Mm-hmm. Mga artista? Mga Miss Universe? Saan busy ang mundo? See how the Greek influence the whole world? So, sa Hebrew, sa Greek, isolated passage to prove a point. Mabuti, sa Hebrew, hindi pwede yung isolated passage. Yung limbawa, uh, limbawa uh, I, don't, I don't know how this is done by the, sabi na doon nila, mga Baptists daw believe that once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. There's not even a verse that says that, di ba? It's a doctrine. So, sa Hebrew, okay, I will, I, will sh- I will share to you what salvation really means in Hebrew. Salvation is actually, para maintindihan natin what is salvation, the word salvation, yasha, yasha, Ang ibig sabihin niyan, sulat niyo na lang, deliverance, rescue, to deliver, to rescue, then the result of rescue is you were delivered from impending death or problems is victory. So basically mga kapatid, Salvation, literally, alimbawa, uh, si King David, oh, praise, sabi niya, Lord, I long for your salvation. Sabi niya, you have saved me from my enemy. It talks about deliverance, which results in victory. So, so basically, Yeshua, our Master Yeshua's name, salvation, means He delivered us from our sins, He redeemed us, then He gave us victory. Pero salvation, mga kapatid, in Hebrew, is an ongoing work. Process. Ang tawag nila dyan is prophetic perfect. Prophetic perfect. By the way, mga kapatid, this is, this is, I'm not really a very expert in Hebrew grammar. No? There, there must be a teacher. Actually, I'm look, dati may Hebrew teacher kami talaga. Uh, talagang Israelite talaga. Pero mahirap na imbitahin ngayon yun eh. Kasi busy na siya. Pero actually mga kapatid, my understanding is the way the Hebrew grammar was written is different from English. Halimbawa, sa English, present tense, past tense, future tense. Tama? 
Present tense, past tense, future tense. Sa Hebrew, mga kapatid, hindi ganun. Dalawa po lang ang tense. Perfect tense and imperfect tense. Ang ibig sabihin niya, naganap na, patuloy pang nagaganap. Patuloy na nagaganap. So, in that context, salvation has been provided by Yeshua, pero tuloy-tuloy pang nagaganap. Tuloy-tuloy pa tayong nililigtas. Hindi lang sa kasalanan, kundi sa aksidente, sa kapahamakan, sa kalusugan, o ako, natumba ako sa motor. Mali yung globes na ginamit ko, pero lesson learned. Sabi, ang lesson number one pala sa motor, pag nagpreno ka, huwag sa harap. Hindi <laughs> sa paa. Di ba? Lesson, hindi ako expert eh. Saka sabi niya na so okay so much to that mga kapatid there's so much to learn we have a special class on that na mga Hebraic mindset, Hebrew language. It's another subject. Focus lang muna tayo dito sa law and grace. At least I've given you a glimpse. Kung gusto nyo mag-self-study, marami pong libro dito tungkol sa Hebraic mindset. Hebrew idioms. Actually, nagbibigay kami ng seminar dati niyan. Mga Hebrew idiomatic expressions. Mga parables in Hebrew. Uh, that means we need Isa lang, we need to understand the Bible Hebraically. So, if we're going to look at the structure of the Tanakh, the first five books in Hebrew, Bereshit, the beginning, Shemot, the names, Bayikra, the third book, Bamitbar, the wilderness, Devarim, this is the first five books, followed by the books of the prophets, uh, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Joel, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Naku, Mabakuk, Sepanya, Chagai, Sikaria, Malagai. So these are the Nebiim, the books of the prophets, sabi nga, mga minor and major prophets, Ito yung tinatawag na mga the sweat and blood ng mga propeta sa Israel. Okay. They are very important books. Da, hindi natin pinapansin yan, mga kapatid. In fact, Alvin, I found out, mas maraming pinag-uusapan tungkol sa kingdom sa mga prophet kaysa sa New Testament. Hmm. Kaya when the New Testament begins about Yeshua teaching about the gospel of the kingdom, 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 80 times in the gospel, the word kingdom is mentioned. Those concepts are found in the books of the prophets and in the Torah. Without the Torah and the prophets, we cannot understand what a kingdom is. Example, lahat ng propeta, Diba, na Nebim? Mula kay Isaiah at sa mga sumunod na propeta, si Jeremiah, si Ezekiel, lahat ng mga ito, or bago, bago sina Isaiah, sina Samuel, sina King, sina Judges, bago si Isaiah, ang pinag-uusapan nilang kingdom ay ang Davidic kingdom. Di ba, pinag-usapan nila yung glory of God of Israel in the Israel, in the Davidic kingdom, in the Davidic dynasty. Pero, starting with the book of Isaiah, nag-iba na po ang pananaw, ang pananaw niya mga kapatid, hindi na Davidic kingdom, kundi the messianic figure. In the book of Daniel. Ibig sabihin, this, the Messiah, 
that is greater than David, that is going to be the, the one who will bring about all the promises of God to Israel in the future. So, with that, mga kapatid, dahil wala tayong oras, so these are the books. Ito po, naka-record naman po ito. Ito po yung compilation. Ketubim. So, Okay, reading Moses. It's ship title to property. So there's two kinds of Torah. One is the written Torah and the oral Torah. So we will not deal much with the oral Torah because this is interpretation of the rabbis. I'm going to sh so so if you say the bright foundation, we need to accept the written Torah as God's revelation. Yeshua said, I have not come to abolish the Torah. If we don't study the Torah, we will not connect with the New Testament very clearly. And that's for sure. Ngayon, there's a book that I'm reading now. It's written by Messianic uh, groups in Israel. So one for Israel, very popular in, in the internet. The one for Israel movement in YouTube. Mga scientists, mga doctor, mga lawyers, and mga hudyo na nakoconvert. And this group wrote this book, Reading Moses, Seeing Jesus, How the Torah Fulfilled Its Goal in the Messiah. Okay, for the record, mga kapatid, sabi niya dito sa preface, We decided to write this short book because questions about the believer's relationship to the Torah, the Bible of Moses, or the Pentateuch, and its commandments, the law, are among the type top five most frequently asked questions for our ministry, one for Israel. How does the Torah of Moses apply to us today? So, ito na yung libro, resulta mga kapatid, una sa lahat, umpisa natin sa Romans 10 for Messiah is the goal of the Torah. Okay. From the perspective of the rabbi, mga kapatid, the purpose of creation, sabi rito, is the giving of the law and the choosing of the people of Israel. The law is the medium and the most important in the world. The entire world is nothing compared to studying the Torah, the law, and compared to keeping the commandment as nothing compares to the law. So we have no doubt that biblical law is the word of God. What the rabbis are saying for thousands of years, they got the impression that the commandments of the Torah are the most important and central thing to God. So, so basically, para mga dispel na yung mga notion na yan, ba't pa tayo nakapokus sa law, commandments? Mga kapatid, i-balance natin ngayon yan. Sabi ng isang rabbi, the law was given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and that Adam was busy, busy studying the law all day long. Adam, the first man, studied the law. The world was created for the law. Pag binasa niya itong libro rito, ito, banda rito, lahat yan tungkol sa Torah. Walang binibida ang mga rabbi. The Torah, the law, the Torah. Pero, Ang focus ba ng Torah ay the commandments ba talaga or the narrative? Kasi, ma-misunderstood tayo ng mga Christians kung panay banggit natin Torah, the Torah, the Torah, the Torah. Ano ba? Hindi nung di nga nakakasunod yan. Ang hirap na sundin yan. Eh. Mga kapatid, for the record, let's set this straight. The dominant genre of the Torah is the story, the narrative. When commandments and rules do appear 
they always come in addition to the main story. So, ibang approach ito ngayon, mga patid, para maintindihan tayo ng ating mga beloved Christian brothers and sisters. Huwag kayo mainis sa kanila. Tawagin nyo siya ang lag. Beloved. Bea, huwag nyo awayin. Ha? Sa Facebook, ha? Beloved. Beloved brother. Beloved brother and sister. Lalo na si Set Apart Aisha. Because the problem is, so many people have looked at the Pentateuch, the Torah, through the eyes of the rabbi. We might think that it's about an array of commandments, 613 commandments. By the way, mga mati, pero, wife, you know, may ita example ah. Gano, gano, gano ka-importansya ang binibigay ng mga rabay sa Torah? The 613 mitzvot. 613 questions about the 613 mitzvot. Pini-question pa yung mitzvot. The 70 pages of the Torah. So, Silipin niyo tong mga libro nito. Tungkol yan sa Torah lahat. Grabing emphasis. Commandments, 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 commandments. Mga rabay, ganun sila. Kaya no wonder. Ang tanong ngayon, ba't mga rabay hindi tumatanggap kay Yeshua? Kasi they missed the point. What links together the commandments is the story. The story in the Torah. Halimbawa, the, the Torah is not a book of commandments that includes occasional stories, but rather, the Torah is a narrative that also includes commandments. This is a different way of understanding the Torah, Mahabadi. And by the way, this is written by Israeli in Israel. Mga believers in Yeshua, itong libro na to. So the stories in the Torah create one large narrative framework which begins with the story of creation in the Garden of Eden and concludes with the death of Moses before the conquering of the Promised Land. So what is the purpose? The purpose of the Torah Is going to be explained next week because we don't have time anymore. <laughs> so we have spent already two hours. We have about two hours lang para bang, oh, parang, ah, bitin yun lang. Parang ulam, parang ulam, parang nalalo ka lang na busy because there's so much to study. Kaya, mga manit, congratulations. Ano sa Hebrew? Study is the highest kind of worship. worship. It's greater than everything because in study. By the way, i-correct ko lang sa inyo, kingdom mindset, ha? isulat nyo to. Pag sinabi kong isulat, ito yan, ibig sabihin, napaka-importante niya dapat magtawa nyo. The word theology, if you go to Bible school today, theology 1, theology 2, theology 3, theology 4. Oh, sister yata ng Bible school. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng Theology. The study of God. Okay. Sa Greek mindset, you study God. Sa Hebrew mindset, hindi ganon. You obey God. You don't say to God, God, I will study you first. If I decided to obey later, I will tell you. Anong sasabihin mo sa hari? Ah, mahal na hari, pag-aralan muna kita ah. Pag kumbinsido na ako, babalik ako, sabihin ko, okay na, magsusunod ako sa'yo. Ganun ba sa kingdom? In kingdom, you don't study God. You obey God. Hello? Ganun po ang Hebra. Nag-gets niyo po ang difference? No wonder, most people just study and study and study. They never reach to obeying the Torah, the commandments. Because they have a Greek mindset. Our academic, our school uh, educational system is all great. 
Most of the subject na inaaral sa school, hindi naman nagagamit eh. Most of them, 90% ng inaaral sa school, hindi mo magagamit. Just to make you educated, mga kapatid. Just to know. And as far as the world is concerned, knowledge has increased, pero the knowledge of God is not, most people does not care. That's why we're in the end times. What God needs are Hebraic people with a Hebraic mindset that understand His mind. Anak, don't study me, obey me. As you study, you obey. As you obey, you study. That's what a disciple means. You know what disciple means in Hebrew? Hindi patuloy na tapos tuloy. The word disciple in Hebrew is talmid. Okay? It comes from the word lamad, which means to learn, to teach. And as you teach, you learn. Iyan ang tunay ng disciple. You learn, you apply, you obey, you teach. As you teach, you learn the more. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng disciple. And we are all disciples of Yeshua. I'm just the tool to a vessel. Nagigamit ng pagkinong. So with that, my thing, I think we need to pray na and our prayer because we have our service. Salamat po mahal na haba pagkinong na for the first time nagamit namin tong lugar na to. At we dedicate, this is just the beginning, our Father, na nagamit namin itong lugar na to para sa pag-aaral na yung banal na salita, ang Torah, Panginoon, the proper understanding of your Torah. This is what is lacking in Christianity today. So we pray, Abba, use us as a vessel to remove all the confusion, Panginoon, that lies in our Christian brothers and sisters' teachings, mga Paul's teachings, Panginoon, mag-clarify na ito once and for all, Panginoon, that indeed we need to go back to the Hebraic roots of our faith so that we can please you and we can learn not just to study you, Lord, but to obey you because you are the king of the universe. You deserve to be obeyed. You are our father. You deserve our obedience. And we love you and we glorify your name because... Lahat ng ginawa mo ay mabuti para sa amin. Lord, rest assured, next Shabbat, next meeting, uh, magpapadala po kayo ng marami marami pang sudyante rito, mag-aaral mga yung dahil doon sa atin. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Bat shalom. Bat shalom.